I'm trying to encourage them to be Times readers, to elevate themselves on some level, to have an appreciation for what that brings their lives, the cultural capital it provides to them, the, the ability to say in a conversation with that corporate recruiter or hopefully other uh, influential person in their life, yeah, I read that something in the Times. I often hear them saying, well, I brought this up in my political science class or my anthropology class, and one of my professors said, where did you learn that? And that is from the use of the Times because they're current, they're up to date with what's happening in the world. The other thing that really I love to see is walking around campus, seeing students on this lawn, on benches, in front of the library, just enjoying reading the paper. And I think that, uh, that has brought a dimension that uh, is, is quite interesting. And I, I didn't notice too much newspaper reading prior to the New York Times uh, coming to campus. I think if you can introduce something as complex and rich and actually overflowing at the borders <laughs> as the New York Times that you can never you know, read all of or understand all of, you've really stirred the pot and added some amazing ingredients that you can't even know their, what their effects are going to be. In order to be a, the best journalist, you have to read the best. And it's the standard of um, newspapers. And so by reading it, it just rubs off on you naturally in your writing, in our own assignments. I think there's something in there for everyone to learn. And it's a matter of individual preferences as to how you learn it. but. I've l I know that every student can learn from the use of the New York Times because I've seen it now for the 30 years of my teaching. I'm trying to give them a perspective of a national paper. It's, newspaper reading is down among young people and if I can instill a newspaper reading habit that's probably going to do more good than anything else I can offer them in many ways and if I can have them read the Times so much the better because the idea being in my mind that it's a national paper, it's an international paper, it's got the most global outlook of all the newspapers. They've got the big network of foreign correspondents around the world where all the others are cutting back. The Times has maintained an even larger advantage over the others and you know there's only room in a lot of people's newspaper diet, their reading diet, for one newspaper and my point of view is if it's going to be one let's let it be the best one. The New York Times has relevance in like a lot of subjects not just um, obviously it applies to all business classes it's relevant and then anything that has to do with politics or society or history it's just you pick it up and you'll find something that relates directly to what you're learning about in class. One student joked you know I think you know do you have contact with the New York Times? Are you telling them to include these articles? Because it seems like every time we start to study something, an article on the subject comes up. It seems like there's a conspiracy here. The collaboration that we have had with the representative from the Times, they have really been partners in education of our students. Um, they have come frequently to our campus. They have sponsored faculty development sessions. They have helped us bring speakers uh, you know, uh, um, to our campus. They have sponsored luncheons. Uh, 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 so we feel that you know, uh, a kind of real partnership here, that there is, we don't see commercial interest. It's pretty exciting to see. It really is. You take a, a group of naive or inexperienced young people and you turn them on to and show them the world.